Hi again everyone, welcome back, I'm Eric. Um, today I've got another little video for you. Well, it's not that little, it's actually quite long. Um, but basically, oh, I've been waiting for this to come out for a little while now. Um, so I couldn't wait to get my hands on it. I've had a decoder sat waiting and all sorts. So uh, I picked this up the other day from AJR Model Store. As always, Anthony's taking my money off me. I can't help myself. Uh, it's the new London Transport L L92 pannier tank. Um, supposedly it was meant to be a new tooling I was under the impression of, but I've not seen much evidence of that. Um, but basically it's a nice little model, but they're quite basic when you get them. Um, so what I have done, because they don't come with any lighting, anything like that. So I have fitted a Loxound V4 micro decoder um, with a wheel tapper sound file. Uh, I have fitted front lights, I fit a rear light, I fit a flash and tail lamp and a firebox light. Um, I've painted up the cab uh, and a few other little odds and sods, but um, yeah, just uh, wanted to really sort of make it something a bit special really, because uh, I, like I said, I've, I've the reason that I haven't had a pannier tank on my layout is because I've been waiting for this, thinking it would be something special or new, but um, to, to be fair, as much as it's, I love the Loco, it's a little bit disappointing. Um, but I mean, they're not that expensive, they're about 100 pounds, 110 pounds, so. It's not the end of the world, but um, yeah, so let's crack on and uh, suppose show you through the process of the sort of stuff I've been doing. Um, I probably won't film the whole lot because uh, it is, it's just so involved. So um, it will just be odd odd clips here and there of the kind of stuff I'm doing. So sort of bear with me, um, but we'll get there and uh, we'll have some running shots near the end. So uh, stay tuned. So you can see here, I've got the body off. Um, and what we're doing is I've taken out the weights that normally come in the loco. So you've got this one here and this one. They normally, this one sort of sits in the side like that. It sort of sits in the um, the water tank. Uh, and you get this one sits on the other side. They're just black tacked in. So I've got a little flag screwdriver in there and just sort of prize them out. Uh, what that allows then is for me to get a rail excuse, uh, a rail exclusive baby boomer speaker. You see, it's sort of slotted in. Um, it fits down in that slot, and it's just black tacked in there, and it goes under the chimney or under the funnel, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I've drilled this out with a small drill bit so that the sound can escape. So yeah, that's going to go in place in there. Um, because we've also taken the weights out, the decoder will fit in one side and will fit a stair live in the other side, uh, either side of the motor. Uh, that should all fit quite snug. Um, on the chassis, I've got the cab bulkhead here and you can see I fitted a very small pre-wired SMD orange LED. I've just uh, made a little square hole for it to just sit in and I've just glued it into there. So uh, that's going to be our firebox light. Um, and obviously to power it we're going to need a decoder. So here I've got a Loxound V4 Micro which I've been keeping hold of. Um, and we are going to put wheel tapper sound in this. Uh, I've got the sound file in my emails now ready to load on. So we're going to use that down one side so that will sit sort of down the side of the motor like, like so um, with the firebox light on function one. Uh, I will put directional lights in at some stage, but uh, for now I'm just gonna put it together as is with just the firebox and then we'll uh, see how we get on. Uh, if you need any extra room as well, the cab does come apart completely. So you can pull the main cab roof off from the coal bunker in the coal bunker there's a big weight which you can take out and that then leaves you with a lot of space as well so there's a lot you can do with this it's quite handy but yeah so now i suppose uh i'll crack on get this all wired in um oh something to mention to fit this speaker in i have had to disconnect the eight pin socket so i've, uns I've desoldered the eight pin socket which would normally sit on the top of the chassis there uh, and I've had to saw off one of the one of the you know, lugs that that screws into, because uh, otherwise you won't be able to get the body back on fully. 
So this means I'm going to have to hardwire the decoder in, but it's no biggie. Uh, I don't like doing it because uh, I like having them all removable in case uh, I need I need to put them in something else or something like that. But for this, it's just a bit of a one-off, so we'll do it. But yeah, you can just see you're left with the uh, the motor wires on top and the pickup wires here as well, so it's not hard to wire it in. So let's crack on. So just looking at how to install this trainomatic stay alive, which is this one here. It's the uh, SPP-N. So it's a different, they do two different ones. Um, but it's obviously a three wire stay alive, similar to what you get on the ESU power pack. Uh, and on their website, they have actually got the diagram on where to wire into the decoder. So I'm using the Loxan V4 Micro. So on here, you can see the, uh, U positive the charge wire and the ground wire. Um, handily below that, it's got the Loxan 5 diagram and it actually shows you the wire colours as well, um, which correspond to what we've got here. Um, so basically, on the V4 micro, so the U positive wire that is actually the blue aux positive wire. So if you so it's hard to sort of match it up really so you can see but you've got the aux positive here and you can see it's hard to see because there's a, a cover on the decoder but there's two chips here so you can sort of see that the same setup replicated here so that's showing you that it's this solder pad um, and this these two wires go on the back of the decoder so if you look for these solder tabs Let's sort the telltale sign. So here they are. You've got these tabs here. So that's sh this. The diagram shows that there's a component there, but on this one it doesn't have it fitted. Um, but it's basically saying to connect the other two wires to. If I can fo let it focus. <laughs> Not ideal. Basically, need to connect the solder tabs to this wire. This solder point here. Uh, goes on one wire, goes on the ground wire, and the third one up, this little one, goes on the charge wire. So I'm going to get on um, soldering it onto there and see if it works. So you can see the setup in here. We've got the baby boomer at the front. We have got the Loxan V4 Micro tucked into the side there, and on the other side we have got the Trainomatic Stay Alive. That's now wired into the decoder. I've cut the plug off because we're hard wiring it in. So uh, now just wire it in, see if it works. So you can see we've just got the pickup wires here and the motor wires, solders and heat shrinked on. They're obviously gonna tuck in above the motor. There's just a little bit of room up there. So they're gonna tuck in above. The wires coming out here are just loose at the minute. They are for the lighting. Um, so they will be the next thing to sort of tidy up. Uh, and I'll have to connect up the smoke box as well. So uh, on to the next step. So I've decided I am just going to wait until Alan can make me some lights. Um, so he should be able to do me some tonight. So I've got my already got my tail lamps, which he's done for me. You can see here, uh, BR tail lamps. Um, so I've got one of them going on the left here. So you can see I've just, um, with a, a very sharp Stanley, make sure it's a sharp one, because uh, otherwise if you slip, you'll just end up scratching your model up. You're less likely to slip using a sharp one, but um, just drilled a hole there with a 0.9, I think it was drill bit. Um, bigger hole than I need, but on the rear, where this lamp is going, uh, you won't be able to notice it, because it goes straight through the back. Um, I've also drilled a hole here, which is, I've taken slightly taken the top lip off, but you won't see that once the lamp's fitted. Um, and this hole sort of goes down slightly diagonal. Um, so on the back, I said I'm going to have the flashing tail lamp here, which will be on a separate function. Here I have uh, a BR uh, headlamp um, for if the loco is propelling. Um, I've looked at some pictures of when uh, they had pannier tanks on steam on the Met and things like that, and they had they had a head a headlamp on the uh, top middle and um, tail lamp on the bottom left. Um, on the front. I've used a smaller drill bit. I think it's uh, 0.6. So you can see I've just drilled two holes in the front here because that's where the front lamps are gonna go. Um, so what I did is, so that the drill bit, to center it, 
I actually got my soldering iron. Um, I got my soldering iron because it's got really f quite a fine tip on it. I just touched it in the middle, uh, and it just just um, quick enough to slightly melt the plastic um, and sort of dip it inwards uh, in the centre because I didn't want to put the drill bit in and then it sort of wander about and scratch up the rest of the model. Um, so that's worked out quite nicely actually. So what I'll do is um, when I get the lamps off Allen, they'll sort of sit, they'll sit on there, but um, the wires will go straight down uh, through the chassis and then they'll run along the inside um, of the chassis and then back up into the body itself. So that should hide it out of the way quite nicely. Um, the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna have, so the front the front headlamp on this side, so both, we're gonna have both headlamps lit. That's gonna be on the white wire of the decoder, which is usually the headlamp wire. Um, the left hand headlamp will be by, we'll have two LEDs in it, so it will also do a red. Uh, and the red will be on the yellow wire for when the loco is traveling backwards, obviously. Um, this end we will have the firebox LED on AUX1 on the V4. We will have the rear headlight on AUX2. We will have the flashing tail lamp on AUX3 and I'll set that up to flash in the lock programmer. Uh, and then AUX4 needs to be reserved for the stay alive. So we've just got enough functions on a V4 luckily. Um, if you use a 21 pin V4 AUX 3 and 4 uh, aren't full power outputs, so you can't do this sort of stuff without a, uh, a little amplifier board. So I am quite pleased that this is an 8 pin loco, um, because it means obviously I can hardwire the decoder in to give me more space, and I can mess around with more functions rather than just stand front and rear lightning that you can't turn off, which really bugs me. Um, so yeah, that sh should be cool. So. I suppose uh, all I can do now, other than I suppose I could test run the loco and just make sure it works with these wires if I just tape them off so they're not going to catch anything. Um, but other than that, I'm going to have to wait for Alan to um, make me the lights until I can crack on. So we've got the loco on the test track now on the uh, decoder programmer. So if you go on Trainomatics instructions again, it shows you what settings to change on a Lock Sound V4 to uh, make their stay alive function. So you've got the CVs, so 124 set to 16, then uh, CV 31 to 16, CV 32 to zero, CV 315 to zero, and then SPP timeout, CV 113, zero to 255. So I gather this is the time, the amount of time that you want the stay alive to be active for. Um, obviously um, you probably want the maximum as possible really, but um, default value when I read the decoder, it was set at 20. So I set it at uh, 150 uh, and gave it a little test and now I've set it at 250 I think, or was it, I can't remember, well easy way to test, if we go on here, oh I set, it to, I set it at 200, yeah it was the last one I did so, yeah so I set that at 200, um, so that was the last, last thing I did. Um, and then that should enable the stay alive to function properly. So if we now go over to the issue software, we've got the test track turned on. The address is currently set number number four. Um, we'll obviously change all this later. And uh, it, I've not uploaded the sound file yet. It's still got the original sound file, um, which is like a DMU or something. So it's gonna look quite funny. But um, if I just test Obviously, before you do this, actually, I should point out, if you've got a lock programmer, when after you've done a load of wiring like, like I have, if you go and read CVs, um, if you, this is a tip I've got from Alan, if you read CV30, so read that, it should come out with zero. So there you go, it comes back with zero. Now, if you've got any other number, then that apparently means that there's a fault on the decoder or you've wired something incorrectly. So before you do anything, put any proper power to the loco, do this if you've got the facility to do it, because um, that could save your decoder. But um, again, yeah, if we just uh, give it a little test. So see, this just operates like a normal throttle up and down, you've got all your functions. So, uh, you see there, it runs along quite happy. Now if we, uh, Go back the other way. 
what I'll do is I'll just pick the loco up and you can see we'll get a good second or so of running. There you go, see? Just enough to get you over some points. Um, I'll stop that now. If I turn the sound on also, Obviously take it with a pinch of salt, it's the wrong fire. Just to give you an idea. So just give the stair line a few seconds to charge back up again. Now what I'll do is I'll just tip the local up so it's not making a circuit. You see how long the sound runs for. See that's a good two or three seconds, it's quite impressive actually. I don't know how long it'll go for uh, with it moving, we can always try that. Give that a go. Is it moving off? We'll pick it up and see if we get anything out of it. At some point today, that'd be nice. <laughs> there we go. There you go, you get about a second out of it. That's perfect for getting over some dirty points and things like that. And it's off again. <laughs> Oops. But yeah, so great first test. What I'll do now, now that um, the locos are working fine, is I'll use the program track um, and I'll use that to upload the sound file onto it rather than take the decoder out and plug it into the programming board itself. So I'm just um, making room for the LEDs to go in. So this is the weight that goes in the coal bunker and uh, I've dremeled a channel out of the middle and dremeled this corner off and that will go in this way. So you see that corner is going to be where that wire is for that LED and the sensor is where the LED wires will run down for the headlamp. Um, so on the coal bunker itself I have drilled the little hole at the bottom in the middle in the sensor um, so obviously the wires, I'm going to black tack them down the center and then they should run in that channel. Um, to do it on the loco, because I've got to, because I've got to drill it so close to the edge there, um, and I don't, if you can see that, I see I've got to drill it right on the edge. You can see where that one is. I want it to just be by the edge. So rather than, uh, as I said earlier, what I'm doing is using the soldering iron to get started. Um, because it's obviously plastic, um, so it sort of indents it and then gives me some sort of uh, like a, a dome shape for the drill bit to sit in. Um, so I'm just going to do that now, I'll show you what I mean. So I've got my soldering iron here and I'm just, I've got, I've got a little mark there where I want to put it. So all I'm doing is that, just like so. Put that back and then I've got... This is, uh, again, my, I think it was a 0.9mm drill bit. Um, bigger than I need, but for the back, you're not going to see it. So, just put that on there. And uh, it's not going to need much to go through at all. There you go, it's through already. And then, uh, just take a little fresh Stanley blade. Just clean that edge out, and uh, I'll do the same underneath. But because you can't, because you've got this sort of stud in the way, you're not going to get the Stanley in there. So what I'll do, uh, I will get a bigger drill bit. So I've got this. I've got a three mil drill bit here. And I'll just put that on the hole and just to give it a twist. No. Yeah, that will just take that top off, you see. It's just a lot more flush now. Let's get rid of that. You can see that hole in there. The wires will come through there nicely now. So see the top's nice and sort of flush. Always, so I'm just, all I did was that. That's it. Just takes any burrs off. Um, and then, obviously, I've not fitted the centre headlight yet. 
but these will then poke down through the body. And the coal bunker will just sit in its normal position, which is about there. So you see the coal bunker will sit there. The wires will just come through underneath and what I'll do is I'll black tack them to the underneath of the chassis. And uh, what this has allowed me to do is keep the whole chassis weight. So that will slide back in and uh, clear the wires. And uh, obviously that has the screw holes in the bottom, which actually retains the cab half of the body. Uh, and because this end of the body shell, you can see doesn't have any, there's no sort of screw points. Um, so you can screw it down the front, but the back of, of the body would lift up. So when the cab all slots together, that all keeps everything in place because the cab slots inside this. Um, so that sort of stops it all. You can see it's sort of squared off. So it stops it, the whole thing lifting. But yeah, um, so literally that's all I can do now until I get the lamps. So uh, I'll see you again when those come. Right then, so Alan's uh, now sorted me out my uh, lighting that I need. I've got the uh, firebox installed. You see the wiring coming out here. We've got the positive going to this little resistor board, which is supplied by Alan also. The negative to the green wire, which is function one. So, uh, and as I said, I've got the lamps now from Alan. So we have got, this is just a standard. So they're all uh, just BR lamps. This is a white headlamp. So we've got the, uh, the little tiny lens there with the LED inside um, and we got another one and this is uh, a white and a red in one how he fits this in with both LEDs I don't know but uh, there you go um, and we've also got another white one here now you'll notice these two the light the wiring comes out the bottom of the lamp this one comes out from the back so this one is obviously the one that goes on the tender not the tender sorry the coal bunker Obviously that needs to go straight in that way, whereas the um, the two for the front of the body, obviously the wires go straight down, so they will go in there with the uh, dual LED one on the left. So uh, I'm going to get on installing those now, and then uh, we'll see about wiring them up. So there's the car bunker, we've got the lamp installed at the top, the BR tail lamp on the bottom left. At the back you can see the wires. A little bit of black tack holding that wire in place and uh I'll stop wobbling the camera around it helps showed you earlier i dremeled the back of this out it should now fit in there hopefully and yep the uh screw holes line up that's gone back in there and we've got the wire sticking out the bottom so the cab can now go back together. Um, while I was waiting for the lamps, I did paint the inside of the cab green and um, sort of painted a little bit of the cab bulkhead. Um, I've got a O-gauge Dapol pannier tank and uh, the Lum Transport one, so um, the inside is painted green. It's not the exact color, I've just sort of quickly winged it, but um, about as close as I could get it to the O gauge model, uh, so uh, it will do. It's better than just plain black, anyhow. I'm sure it'll look nicer when it goes back together. But uh, yeah, so that's the back ones done. Now I'll just chuck the, the front ones in and then see how we get on. So we've managed to squeeze the pannier back together. You can see we've not got any wires hanging out, which is nice. We've got the flashing tail lamp down here, the BR tail lamp. We've got the reversing headlight. And on the front end, we have got the twin LED headlamp and the normal headlamp, uh, which Alan has supplied me. So the body is back together and uh, just on the program a quick, if I just take you over here. To get the flashing tail lamp, just go onto function outputs. We've got it on AUX3, uh, no sorry, AUX2. So all you do is on the uh, lock programmer, you set that function to end of train flasher set the brightness to however you want I mean I'm pretty happy with where it is to be fair um, you can set a delay for it to start 
to turn on and off, but we don't need that on this one. Um, so yeah, we've got the end of train flasher, then you go on function settings, you've got frequency for blinking effects. Now that's how often you want it to blink. Uh, now BRTL lamps, I believe, are two, two flashes every second. So I've got that set to 0 0.5 seconds at the minute, uh, and I've just tested it and it works fine. The other output we've got is AUX1, we've got the firebox, so I've got that set to firebox at the minute, and uh, that's about that really. So let's just uh, give it a little test. So you can see the flash and turn up there, it's now working fine. If I change direction, have the headlight on for reverse moves, which also means that at this end, We've got that left lamp lit as a tail lamp. Change direction again. And we've got the two whites for the forward facing headlamps. If I uh, press the firebox function, you can see yeah, the nice flicker. So, uh, yeah, it's all working. So, here we are then. The pannier is now on the layout. I suppose the uh, only thing to do now, give it a little test run. Um, the only thing is I've not finished programming it. Basically what has happened is I've been sent the wrong file. So the file that's currently in this is actually for a 64XX Pannier tank. And this is obviously a 50 whatever it is, XX blah blah blah. Um, so it's actually the wrong sound file. So I've not got mad programming it. I've literally put the lights on directional. Um, what I'll do when I've got the proper sound file is um, function zero will be directional light, so front and rear directional. And then function 10, what I usually do on my locos is I have it so just the, f the lights on the front end work and it disables the tail lamp so that when you're pulling a train, you haven't got a tail lamp flashing away. Um, so bear, bear that in mind because uh, in the running shots, the tail lamp will be flashing, flashing its nuts off. So <laughs> just uh, take it with a pinch of salt, but um, it gives you an idea of the loco running anyway. Right, so stuff that I've gone and installed the correct sound file now. It sounded like awful before. So uh, have a listen to this.
So there you go, there's the pannier all complete. Um, I suppose to sum it up, it's uh, a lot of work, but in my opinion, it's worth it. The only drawback to this is to fit everything in, uh, I had to take the weights out of the body. So you might start to struggle if you're pulling more than a few coaches. Um, but these sort of things, they're only, they're only little engines anyway, so they'd only pull a couple in, in reality. So uh, I'm not too bothered, especially on my sort of layout. Uh, it's not a problem at all. I'd rather sacrifice that and have the sound and lights and stuff. So um, yeah, I'm really happy with it. The only thing I would change uh, if I was to do another one uh, is I would actually put a Locktown V5 micro in because I just had a V4 micro sitting around spare. So I sort of reserved it, if you like, for this loco now that it was coming out. Um, if I use a V5 micro, they've obviously got more function outputs which would mean that I can have the rear headlight on its own independent function, which is what I do on most of my locos now. Um, but it's not the end of the world, I can live with it. I tend to pull trains with it facing the right direction anyway, so it'd be nice to have, but it's not the end of the world. But um, yeah, it's the first time also using a Trainomatic Stay Alive. Um, very pleased with it. It's very easy to set up and install. Go straight on the decoder, it's so just three wires, a couple of CVs that they list on their website. It's so easy to do. Um, so I'd recommend those. Uh, I believe um, Chinna and Princess Risborough Railway can get those in. Um, who's the person I got them off? Um, through Alan, as always. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's worth looking into stair lives because for little engines like these where they haven't got a lot of pickups and a lot of weight, they really do make a nice difference, just uh, smooth running wise. Um, but yeah, so it was a bit of a long-winded one and uh, a bit all over the place, but I wasn't really planning on videoing, so hopefully uh, people get something out of it and sort of see what you can do with these new models. So uh, anyway, yeah, um, thanks for watching and uh, please do all your liking and subscribing and all that rubbish. Uh, go and check out my video with me HSTs if you haven't seen it. It might be of some sort of interest if you're into modern image. Um, but yeah, other than that, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.